So yeah, um, I think that a first fundamental tip would be um, focus on posts, right? Um, so I don't, I don't think that the LinkedIn um, publishing, you know, the longer form article mm. uh, option they have does doesn't get any views, no distribution for whatever reason. LinkedIn doesn't really give much attention to that. So what gets the most attention is the the simple text post. Now, video is good too. I think mm. um, if you want to do video, okay. but. But if, you're, if we're talking about writing, um, the, mm. the written text post, and the mistake that many lawyers make um, is thinking about LinkedIn as a link sharing platform, right? Where mm. you're writing something on your law firm blog or website, and then you're sharing a link to that content. And so you're essentially using LinkedIn as a promotional tool, right? You're trying to drive people mm. back to mm. your website. LinkedIn, like any social media platform, suppresses that content because they don't want people to leave LinkedIn. Um, they want people to stay on LinkedIn. So the opportunity, mm -hmm. the opportunity is to create content that lives natively on the platform through mm. the simple old fashioned text post, you know, the 1300 mm -hmm. character limit text post. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't use graphics or images associated with my post. I don't include mm. links. I shouldn't say I never do. Occasionally I do, but I do every day, every morning, I post a, a just a text post. Um, it's like a mini blog post, uh, you know, mm. usually around 200 words. And then maybe if I do a second post on a day, it might be a link to a podcast episode I recorded or something I wrote for another website or something like that. But the key thing is focus on the... Uh, form of content creation that LinkedIn favors, that LinkedIn okay. will give distribution to, and that's text posts, because again, they want you to stay on the platform. Um, and then when you're thinking about, you know, the mechanics of a text post, um, think you've got to think about it uh, differently than you might, you know, your your a blog post you're writing on um, your okay. website. There there are there are parallels, but there are some key differences. So. Um, you know, you think about your average user on LinkedIn, they're probably on their phone using the app, um, they're scrolling, right? Uh, you need to think about your first line of your post mm. as essentially the headline that you would attach to a blog or an article, right? You need to grab their attention. Um, and, and so that's key to be thinking about. Now, what's often overlooked as well is that that's not the only line of a post you're writing on LinkedIn that's important. Um, if you if you're doing just a, a, a no image, no graphic text post, well, then line five of your post is extremely important as well, because okay. if you if you think about it, line five is the one that corresponds to that little see more button um, that you'll see in the post. So that is true. if you want to if you want people to see more, well, you better intrigue mm. them as to why that's the case. So line five is often a place to kind of leave a little cliffhanger in yeah. your post, you know, like you might your first line might say something like you know, uh, well, not, I'm not gonna use ex the exact language, but like you're identifying a problem, you know, okay. you space, you, you, know, you know, here's why it matters. And then the fifth line is, and here's mm. what you need to do about it with a colon. Mm. And then, you know, mm. naturally people, if they wanna know what to do about it, they're gonna have to click okay. see more. Um, and then finally, think also about your last line because what you're trying to do on LinkedIn is not just, you know, not just, give a speech, so to speak, you're starting to, you want to mm. start catalyzing a conversation, right? You want people to engage with your content in the comments. That's how, you know, that's the beauty of LinkedIn to me from a content creation standpoint is mm -hmm. when you're writing for your, you know, a blog post for your website, it's, it's very asynchronous, meaning there's no, it's, you know, someone might find that post and interact with it, but there's no way for them to interact with you back unless they take the time to email or call you, which almost never yeah. happens, right? Yeah. Um, Whereas on LinkedIn, it's still asynchronous in the sense that you're not having a direct chat with someone necessarily. You're po you're posting content, other people are engaging with it, but they they can leave comments right there. It's a very intimate experience in the sense that it's your picture, it's your name, it's your headline, it's your content, and then they mm -hmm. can engage with that. So you're ha you are really starting to have a conversation mm -hmm. with people as a result. Mm -hmm. But in order to provoke that conversation, that last line, maybe it's a question, maybe it's something just, you know, a provocative statement in yeah. order to try to get that conversation started. And that conversation is then what oftentimes leads to, you know, more, uh, a more personal relationship with the people you're connected to on LinkedIn and potentially new business opportunities. Um, so thinking about not just 
the um, you know the substance of our posts. That's obviously important, but also there's some of these form issues that that we need to be thinking about too to make sure that our content is you know you don't want long blocks of text. It's very yeah. difficult to read on LinkedIn. You know, you want to utilize things like bullet points. Um, the form issues do matter because it can stop someone from scrolling. And that's what you're trying to do. And then it then your okay. substance has to take okay. over, right? Okay. You still have to have something really relevant to say as a result of that. Um, so that I think that's another, uh, another key tip. I'm trying to think of one more uh, good one here that I can share. Um, I guess the, the last one is understand the opportunity. Um, one of the things I think that stops people from creating content on LinkedIn, uh, there's a few reasons, but one of them is they don't necessarily understand the opportunity. Um, mm. And the opportunity is great. Uh, you know, we, we oftentimes think of um, social media networks as just these vast, you know, wastelands of, you know, <laughs> yeah. Twitter, I, where I, it's, I it's like, yeah. you're just going to be, you're going to be a needle in a haystack at best, right? right? Okay. Where LinkedIn is different, um, you know, there's approaching 750 million users on the platform, but LinkedIn tells us through its data that less than 1% of the people on the platform are actually actively creating content, meaning, and they define well, that that's as- That's a great statistic, yeah. Yeah, they, they define that as like one post per week, um, and, and that's hardly anything. So, so as a result, it's a content deficient platform, meaning there's way more people looking for content on the platform than there are people creating content on the platform. So to the extent that you're willing to step into that opportunity and start to become a content creator and thought leader, there's plenty of room for your voice to be heard. Um, so don't, you know, don't be afraid. Don't think that you're just going to be invisible. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you know, I, I know, I know lawyers who I've worked with, who I've coached, who I collaborate with, who have generated significant practices um, mm. just with the only marketing tactic that they employ being writing content on LinkedIn. Because again, Order. you know, if I'm if I'm focused on content creation and I'm just focused on putting content on my blog, you know, that could be effective. That you know, you're more visible in Google search potentially. Um, you provide a better client experience for those who visit your website. But, you know, I don't know about, you know, any other lawyers out there, but if I think about my own website, you know, I might get 30 to 50,000, you know, visits to my site a, a year mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, I might write a blog post and I, someone, I might get four or 500 views on that content. When I'm writing on LinkedIn, um, you know, it's not uncommon to get, yeah, I'll, I'll probably over the course of this year, I'll, I'll generate three to five million views of my content on LinkedIn. Yeah. It dwarfs the opportunity it's, or the yeah. amount of people who are seeing my content on, on my website. And again, it's not, it's not that you don't want to have content on your website, but don't you, wouldn't you rather have your content in the place where the, very, the audience you curated is, is spending its yeah. time looking for experts like you? So it's a yeah. much more proactive approach to content creation where I think uh, you know, again, having content on your website is great, but it's more passive. You're waiting for people to come to you, whereas okay. with LinkedIn, you're joining conversation. Would you would you recommend? Uh, uh, so uh, you know, LinkedIn also gives you the opportunity to write uh, 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 posts, right? Bigger posts, which are published mm -hmm. as uh, yeah. sort of blog posts, right? Like it's mm -hmm. within within the LinkedIn uh, uh, within LinkedIn. Uh,